every dislocation have two main vector. One is line tangent vector, which is unit vector, which is just the tangent to the line. Another one is the Burgers vector. It is the amount of the slip carried by one dislocation. Burgers vector is same all along the dislocation. This dislocation, so this is the slip area, this is unslipped area, and the segment that separates slipped region from unslipped region is just this location. And this is the slip plane. We have screw dislocation here. B is always same all along, along the dislocation. This is very important, guys. B is always same, but the tangent vector could be different. So we have different tangent vector, which is just normal to the dislocation line. So if Burger's vector is parallel to tangent vector, we have a screw dislocation. Here, you see, the Burger's vector is in this direction and the tangent vector is also in this direction. So it is screw dislocation. But here, they are perpendicular with each other. Then we have an edge dislocation. And the dislocation normal plane can be calculated once we cross product the dislocation Burgers vector to the tangent vector or the line vector. So if they are not perpendicular with each other or parallel with each other, we have just mixed dislocation. Always, this is always valid. Once we have loop, we conserve the Burgers vector. The summation of all Burgers vector bi is equal to zero. So this is first Burgers vector of a dislocation. It branches. This is very important. Once we add b2 to b3, we will find b1, which is the first Burgers vector of an initial dislocation. And dislocations glide on slip planes defined by their geometry and A. And dislocation can leave their glide plane depending on their character. So it can go to this, uh, for this glide plane or this glide plane. So type of dislocation, basically we have two types. Edge dislocation, tangent vector and the Burgers vector, they are perpendicular to each other, but for screw dislocation, they are parallel with each other. Slip direction. For edge, it is parallel to Burgers vector. For screw, it's also parallel to Burgers vector. Direction of dislocation line movement relative to Burgers vector. It is just vice versa of this one, right? So it is parallel for edge dislocation and perpendicular for slip, uh, for screw. How can we leave the slip plane? For screw, it is cross slip. For edge, it is climb. Let me let me show you what is slip and what is uh, what is climb and what is cross slip. Oops, sorry, sorry. Cross slip. Suppose you have a plane like this, FCC. Say this is one, one, one. So in FCC, we have four one, one, one planes. This is another one, one, one. If your dislocation goes from this plane 
to this plane, we call it cross slip. And screw this location cannot go directly because we need to activate, we need to cross some energy barriers. It creates some kinks. It creates some kinks. Some part of the kinks goes to second plane. Then this kinks evolve and whole this location line goes to second plane. For climb, actually it is an active mechanism at high temperature. Suppose we have a this location here and we have vacancies of atoms, bunch of vacancy, bunch of vacancy. These vacant, at high temperature, these vacancies can diffuse through the core of this location and it, this, this location has some stress field. Edge this location has tensile and compressive stress field, sigma x, x, y, y, z, z, x, x, y. And the stress field of a vacancy can repel one stress field of this location and change the slip direction. And this location start climbing. So it can, instead of going this direction, this, this location can start climbing, going up or down. This is another way, this is another process by which this location can leave the slip plane. All right, guys, I'll just stop at this point. Do you guys have any question? No, Roger. Please ask if you have any question. If not, we will continue next week.